Uh, everybody, another round of applause for All at Once. What a great full electric start to our show with harmony. We don't get that often. Nicely done, boys. Nicely done. Uh, before we start visiting with Mary Beth here, first of all, say hi to Mary Beth. Uh, we need to pay a few bills, as the saying goes. So I want to thank a few of our sponsors uh, who have um, who have uh, helped make this show possible. Mary Beth, is that a comfortable chair you're seated on there? The answer is yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Wilson Office Supply has been our longest running sponsor from the from the very first show, providing these uh, terrific chairs from their Better Backs by Design line of ergonomically correct office furniture. And uh, uh, my only regret is I have to leave this chair behind every Thursday and can't take it home and sit in it, sit in it while I'm working the other six days out of the week. So if you're looking for great office furniture. Uh, to keep you uh, energized and not so sore during the day, check them out at Wilson Office, Office Supply, Better Backs by Design. You spend a third of your life at work, you might as well be comfortable. Uh, Bill and Chill, we just missed Danny Foy. He was in here cleaning out the slot machine, I'm just, uh, the ATM machine. <laughs> Who knows what Danny's up to in this town. Uh, Bill and Chill over here on, on uh, Southwest Parkway is one of our great sponsors. A terrific drive through, very convenient, uh, great low prices, friendly staff. Uh, if you haven't checked them out yet, you should. Bill and Jill, find them on Facebook. In case backup, our second longest running sponsor. There it is. Give them a shout out. Uh, in case backup protects your documents, pictures, music, financial records, and all your files for less than ten dollars a month. Uh, they provide a service uh, that will wirelessly, continuously back up your computer, so you can just set it and forget it. Uh, whether your uh, computer is exposed to a virus or crashes or it gets lost or stolen, uh, your files are backed up. Uh, Incasebackup.com or find them on Facebook. And uh, Crank It Karaoke, uh, the karaoke capital of Wichita Falls. Uh, 50,000 songs in their catalog. They're open seven days a week till 2 a.m. Uh, so you can get your sing on when you don't have a gig, right, David? Good answer, David. Crank it karaoke. You can also find them on Facebook. Uh, we're going to start now. Uh, I was going to have a very long, long monologue on Chick-fil-A. Yeah. But I wanted to get out of here alive and decided not to. So instead, I invited a guest. Everybody, Mary Beth Lee, a uh, round of applause. Mary Beth Lee uh, uh, is a journalism instructor over at uh, Ryder High School. You've been teaching journalism for how long? 18 years. Do, what do you teach specifically? Yearbook, newspaper, journalism, and AV production. Now, when you have these kids come in, it seems like, you know, you, you know, you've been doing it for 18 years, which was has been since the evolution of, of cable news, and, you know, this, that metamorphosis had already happened, but do you see a change in the way your kids come in with their awareness of it or their their approach to, to news and, and media and journalism? Oh, absolutely. They're, they're very, today's teens are very aware of what's really? going on around them. And I would say a decade ago, not so much. And then when I first started, they were... Do you find that they come in with an agenda like, like they're going to, like they already think they know how, how the news is going to be expressed? Because I've seen that among graduates of journalism school where they came out with an agenda. I think I can see that when they're older, but when they're young, they're 14, they're 15 years old when they start my program. And they're, you know, they're fresh, they're they're ready, they want to change the world. So, not so much when they're that I get to work with them before they're like Before that. they're real. Today's journalist has to be able to do it all. You can't just write anymore. You have to be you have to understand broadcast Social media is huge. You have to know how to use it. You have to be able to blog. What a network wants is to be able to drop you in the middle of Afghanistan with a backpack, a computer, and a satellite phone, and for you to be an on-the-spot reporter. When did you start writing books? Oh, gosh. When I was in junior high. Do you still have your original handwritten? I think probably in my parents' garage. Oh, There's probably should... boxes of spiral notebooks. Oh, you know you should find those. So... When did you feel like, okay, now I can, I can start finishing a book and trying to get it published? Well, 1999, I finished my thesis. 
which is honor and lie. It's a novel. It's a it's Annabelle and Sal, and it's the story of two girls raised as friends. One's a slave. One is the master's daughter. Come to find out, they're actually sisters. And, oh, yeah. Nice plot twist. So, and. Um, when I approached Dr. Hoffman, I wasn't going to do a creative thesis at first. I was going to do some other big research project. But I approached Dr. Hoffman and asked him if I could do a creative thesis and then he talked to Mr. Walker and Dr. Campbell and they all three were absolutely supportive. And I finished this the spring of 99. About two years ago, some friends were talking about their success with self-publishing and I thought, well, I've got it on my computer. I'll just sit it in and see what happens. And it's been real interesting to watch what happens. Okay, so then you submitted that just a couple years ago. So walk us through these other three books, the timeline of the other three. Okay, so this one was forever ago, but just published. And then Grace is Enough, I published, but it was written about five years ago. So I had these two. They were, in the bag. They were done. I loved them. I published them. And then the third one was Dead Girl Walking? Dead Girl Walking. It's my first young adult. My friends told me I needed to be writing young adult because... Well, you're around it all the time. I, all the time. And would I had your, this idea. Would your students like that book? They, they have my... I, I don't sell to my students. My students, my current students, they can read for free. That's just the way it is. Probably smart. My, um, Former students, though, who have read it, loved it. So the next one is actually drafted. I'm working on revisions right now. This is my latest book, Letting Go, and it's Christian fiction. And it came out in July, of the, well, just two weeks ago. I've got the second book here written. I'm working on revisions, and, you know, within three months, that next book's going to be out. When you sit down and write these, these stories, do you see the ending as you begin, or does the ending find its own way along the way? It depends. There's no right end. Now, do, what, do you at least map out a first, second, and third act? Do you, do you see these turning points ahead of time? Well, do, they, do they find themselves just in the story? That storytellers are archaic, and we've had the, it's been there forever inside our minds. I think it is built inside the storytelling DNA. Yeah, you. And I think we, where, where at least I've run into trouble is, I forget that and get stuck in a certain, like, this novel I, well, I, I'm going to say this novel I used to be trying to write, because who are we kidding? I wrote the first act, it was really good. And when I got to the part where the second act was started, I just wrote another whole different first act, because it was so much fun. I was like introducing new characters and because that's the easy part I realize that's what I'm good at but I don't have any idea how to turn that I can sort of turn the second corner but I'll be damned if I can turn that third quarter and bring it all back home and partly because I'm paralyzed because I feel like it has to be some perfect ending that all makes sense from everything that I wrote before raise your right hand I give myself permission I give myself permission to write crap to write crap Okay. I think they're all laughing at me. <laughs> the magic's in revision. Well, you know, who back there writes songs? Are you are you in touch with what we're talking about here? I mean, it's you know part of it, and I think part of my problem is I became really good at a very particular format. Sure. A very short format. Sure. And I don't. You know, I can't seem to take that and expand it, or just replicate the short, the short format storytelling enough times to build a long story. You dialed into a couple of uh, networks that are helping you sell books at a rate that you did not previously think possible, correct? Yes. I, uh, Kristen Lamb is a writer out of Dallas, and she has a program, well, a book out about social media and networking called We Are Not Alone. And WANA, W A N A, we are not alone. You can follow it hashtag W A N A or hashtag M W Y W A N A. And it's just, it, it's using social media, it's using Facebook and Twitter, and it's not to sell anything. And that's something that I think everybody needs to understand. If you're trying to sell something, you come across as a used car salesman. 
And there's a reason that's a cliche. I mean, I, I know some used car salesmen who are perfectly wonderful people, but the cliche is people are pushing something in my face all the time. I don't want that. It's so, Monday, Monday, Monday. Exactly. So, <laughs> so instead, you just share your life with people. And then, sure, you can tweet and retweet people's sales information, but a lot of times that's just going to other book writers. So you just share your life with people and be very real. Because the best marketing in the world you can do is to have another book. She really sounds like a hard worker. Yes. I hate when that's the answer. <laughs> well, uh, was there anything we didn't get to uh, regarding your books that you wanted to? Are they for sale right now? You selling hard copies right now? I have hard copies here. They're five ninety nine. I also have. They're all available online. They're a lot cheaper ebooks. So, yes. But I do just use Kindle right now, just Amazon Direct, uh -huh. and. In two months, they'll be available, all except for letting go. In two months, they'll be available with e-retailers everywhere.